Hello, David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. I am here with Mike Poplowski. Oh my gosh, from the culture of Bond. Mike, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, thank you. It's been a long time to get on line here. It, it's, it's, it's been a long time, but it's worth it. And by the way, you look very George Lazenby today. Thank you, That's, that was my focus today. Is that what you're going for? That, that's it. It Frugally. works. It works. It, I so like I, the look. I, I'm doing kind of a Connery look, right? So we're all doing like the vintage heritage thing. That's true. And that's it's, true. It's, it's, it's really appropriate because one of the things that I want to call out to your channel is you really are about the heritage vintage bond more than yeah. anything else. Where does that all stem from? I think it's from my childhood. Because I'm, as one of the old, old timers of... Uh, Bond fandom. I, I remember going to my first Bond movie with the whole family. I didn't know who Bond was during a release uh, right before Thunderball came out. That's how old I'm getting. Thunderball? Yeah, it was before oh that. It was like the, the double feature, Dr. No and Goldfinger. And we walked in unknowing. And then it's like our heads were blown. How, how old Goldfinger. were you? Do you remember? Oh, I was like nine or ten. Nine or ten. That's good parenting, yeah. folks. Yep, I can remember. I'm just telling you. Yep, 65, and definitely, because that Christmas, I got my James Bond attache case, which oh. I wish I had now. It disappeared eventually. Who threw it away? Was it mom or dad? Both. <laughs> they retired, <laughs> moved, and it disappeared during the move. I didn't oh, think no. about it. Oh, so, You'd be a multimillionaire if you had that. Yeah. Or at least a little happier. If I stole my brother's, I'd be a multi-multi-millionaire. Wow. Was his like mint in box or something? No, they were both mint, but they were in a box. They've been played with, but we took care of them. They were good toys. So I have to explain to everybody who may be uninitiated what, what I love. And Mike, Mike and I, gosh, I think we've been friends for like a decade at least. Yeah, about maybe, 10, 11 years, yeah. Maybe even more. Um, but one of the things that I love about Mike is as, as traditional as he says he is, don't believe it for a second, <laughs> you have really gained a very quick following on Instagram because... I think it's your authenticity. You live your life as Bond. Breakfast, food, True. drinks, clothing. Yeah. Day to day, you are dressed like Bond, but not mimicking or cosplaying. This is how you really dress. Yeah, it's 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 a whole style. It's going back to the 60s, growing up in that period, and I dressed as a kid, and then I fell out of it, you know, cargo shorts and crap like that in college in the Army. And then when I rediscovered Bond, I went back. I said, wait a minute. Why... Life is so short. Why spend one day being ugly? Be oh. beautiful every day, and that's that's what I strive to do. So I, my I like images that. are the '60s because I think the style, even to the '50s, is, is so iconic. Mm. And when I go back to Cary Grant, James Bond, that's that's the look. Yeah, even casual. I, that's why I love Thunderball. I get all my casual looks as I, you are wearing today. Yes, from Thunderball. And well, every generation. I say this to to a lot of people, even even young people. Every generation has their style icons. We almost need a template. It's not to mimic them, it's to really give us a bit of a pattern that we can mm -hmm. look at. Um, first time that I met Mike, I'll just take you back very quickly. Um, and I believe I was at my house maybe I remember, a party. I remember meeting at your door and your exact words to me when I what walked was it? up. You looked at me, you looked me up and down and you went, literary bond I was, <laughs> with the briefcase and everything the the, the suit the tie yes I, yes oh my gosh that really brings me back but you he dresses in suits blazers sports jackets when everybody else is in t-shirts where where does that come from and is it just the 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 yearning to like you said to be at that top echelon of looking your best i think it's being trying to be that yeah the top echelon but it's also you know, you you want to be overdressed, but well, sometimes you do. But you want to be in that exceptional mode. Mm. And and I've never been one to just like blend in like the T-shirt. I I don't wear T-shirts in public. However, those Henleys now with the buttons, they're oh. like a stylish T-shirt. And I've kind of updated my whole summer wardrobe with with short sleeve cotton Henleys, and they're yeah. really nice. But I still like to. You know, wherever I go, people go like, where where are those shoes? What what are you doing? That's a big one. But. I just think I, it's better to stand out than to just stand against the wall. Yeah, but you've taken it from just sartorial and clothing aspects, and I see your breakfast, and I mean the guy has <laughs> figs and yogurt and black coffee, and so so. Do you consciously wake up and you're like, all right, I've got to go shopping at the local Wegmans. I need to get, and is it a James Bond shopping list? You know, it used to be, but now it's just... It's me. 
It's it's in my DNA now, so I don't even think about it. I do it all the This is Mike Poplowski's shopping yeah, list. It's not it's James like, Bond's. Hey, hello, Daniel Craig. Oh, give me a few pointers of what the, you should have for lunch, okay? Okay, I'll help you out there. It's like that. It's like I just yeah. do it. And once in a while, my, of course, my wife's eyes will bug out. What are you doing? Oh. Don't, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Because it's, it's hey, I, I, so the figs, whatever. Most of these, and like you, you know, most, most of us are family men. What mm -hmm. does your wife think about all this? Does she tolerate it? What, what is it? She tolerates it. <laughs> it's a good word. But it, it's scary, too, because one day I turned around and said to her, I'm getting really tired. And she turned to me like, what's next? She was scared if I oh. dropped the bond. What will I go into after that? So I said, no, no, not about the bond. I was just tired of something else. So she's like, so she appreciates at least she she's not the type of wife that has to come up to me. Oh, we're going out here tonight. What are you going to wear? She never asked that. Yeah. She it actually maybe makes her kick her game up, even at work. When I go to work, people say, I know what days you're coming to work because all the women dress better. Is that true? Day, yes, yes. Wait, wait, wait. Is, is this like a side effect or something? Or? Yeah, because no, guys don't dress. And oh, they, they will complain about, oh, wow. I can't find a woman. Well, first of all, you're not dressed to attract them. Or my favorite one is someone said, oh, I can dress up when I have to. You got to stop saying when you have to. Mm. You make it part of your... Just every day. Daily, do it. You you might find your wife in the shop right, or maybe at least Wegmans. All right, I, I have a question for you that I'm like dying to ask now because it's part of your DNA. It's part of your natural essence to do this. So during COVID-19, during a pandemic, when most people are wearing those cargo shorts or T-shirts, uh, when you wake up in the morning, what do you put on? My robe. Okay, do you wear your robe Start all day? Robe. No, I put my robe on. Uh, you know, make my go down, watch, read the paper, old fashioned, yep. and a little news, and then I log on for work, make sure everything's squared away. Then I go in, change robes into my shower robe. You gotta have oh. the nice quilting. Okay. Shave with my Gillette. Yeah. You know, I won't go all the details, take my shower, and then I will dress in, depending on the weather. It might be a camp shirt, nice pants, nice shoes. Right now, I'm going back to the long sleeves. I know before you know it, there'll be more sweaters. Yes. And uh, then I go down for the rest of the day, and that's that's how I dress. I have to admit, twice the, the whole summer, I actually put on sweats, and I just stayed in the sweats all day because I was doing other things in the house, you know, in between and before. So I I wasn't feeling that great. But other than that, I don't think there's I don't think I've had a a short yeah. a day in shorts. Wow. I, I I just I can't say that. I can't I can't do shorts. I I've had short days. Uh, yeah. You're in Pennsylvania, of course. <laughs> what does that even mean? You're in New Jersey. That shouldn't mean anything. All right, so we've got to we've got to harken back because I think most of your public persona is on Instagram, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. So wonderful pictures, and I love it. You take food. You know, you've got your sartorial aspect on that. You have your experiences. What made you want to start an Instagram? Well. After being, after getting back into Bond, this is, this is actually my second, if you want to call it, generation of being in Bond. I, okay. As a child, I had a big break in there, the military and, yeah. and, and uh, IT and cybersecurity, and then I rediscovered Bond way back in 2003. What? And I started rebuilding. <laughs> That's why I realized I lost the, that, that James Bond that attache case. Wait, <sighs> now I want it. I missed it. But... That's when I rediscovered it, and yeah. I started studying men's clothing, rewatching the movies, and going back and reading all the books that I used to hide under my bed when I was 10 or 12. Oh. So that's when it all came together, and I realized, this is how, well, maybe not everybody, you should live. <laughs> this is to a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's what I did. And I just practiced it and did it and learned, and men's clothing books and suits and all that, and just built this up where it's now I don't think about it anymore. What's the reaction been? You're on Instagram. I know a lot of younger people follow That's you right. as I, well. So I, I did lose that, didn't I? Well, yeah. I did it for so long. And then one day, you and I were in New York City. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you know, Mike, you don't have a brand. And I said, <laughs> and I sat there and go, holy crap, I've been doing this for like 14 years. Yeah. Even longer than you came back into it. Absolutely. And almost all the other fans. And I was like, you're right. I have no real presence out there. So I had to do a little... A little uh, brain crunch there. Say, so, well, how do I get this going? Okay, get my Facebook thing going. I gotta get a name and lock it in before mm -hmm. someone steals it. That was like a week or two trying to figure a name that hadn't already been used. Name is important. The, the culture of bond, and yeah. then I did that, and then forget the Instagram and linked them up. I even have a website which I hadn't done anything with because Ooh. I think people are moving away from websites. And they don't. Else. They don't go to websites. Exactly. Yeah. So they I, want I, a quick hit. Yep. 
I own it, but I have never done anything yeah. to convert over to it. So I'm just st sticking to the Facebook and Instagram at this point. I think it's smart. And it's actually, I think it's about the one year anniversary. It was September last oh, year. Oh, you're kidding. So I, yeah, it is. It is. Happy so, anniversary. It's good. So I got I got some a good following and uh, made some good friends on it. And yeah. some I've met, some I haven't. And some I will one day. That's phenomenal. All right, listen, you need to go. We're going to leave the links below here. You got to go check it out. It's It's got a little bit of something for everyone. And what I like is, you know, you've deviated from the typical. You've created something very unique, which is what I love. But it's also something very authentic. You're going to, you're going to do this whether you have an Instagram or not. So it's oh, just yeah, like, you know definitely. what? I might as well take a quick picture of this. That's what I love about yeah. your, your channel. Don't, the only thing I'm having a problem with is the COVID because I can't get out enough to get more style photos out there because where are you going? That's why you're here today. I'm, I'm like, it's been, he's going to be a shutter bug. It's like a year, a year <laughs> since I wore a tuxedo. I got to get that tuxedo out and go somewhere, whether yeah. it's the Krausers or 7-Eleven somewhere and wear a tuxedo. Exactly. Hey, I'm Mike. Thank you so much. Mike Poplowski from The Culture of Bond. Go follow him on Instagram. And this has been David Zaritsky for The Bond Experience. We'll see you all real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from The Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.